بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم مسز عالیہ چدون فرام آرمی پبلک اسکول اینڈ کالج فورتھ روڈ راول پنڈی آئی ویلکم ایف ایس سی پارٹ ٹو فزکس اسٹوڈینٹس ان دس آن لائن اسپورٹ پروگرام ٹو تھاؤزینڈ ٹوینٹی دس از سیکنڈ لیکچر فرام ویک تھری وی آر پروگریسنگ ان چیپٹر سکسٹین فزکس آف سالڈ ٹوورڈز دی ٹاپک تھیری آف میگنیٹزم اینڈ ماڈرن ویو اباؤٹ ایٹ گیون آن پیج نمبر ٹو ففٹی سکس ٹو ٹو ففٹی سیون آف یور فزکس ٹیکسٹ بک دا ویڈیو ٹیٹوریل آف دس ٹاپک ول ہیلپ آر اسٹوڈینٹس ٹو ریئلائز دا ماڈرن ویو اباؤٹ میگنیٹزم دیٹ دا میگنیٹک پراپرٹیز آف دی سبسٹانسیز آر ڈیو ٹو دی موشن آف الیکٹرانس ان دا ایٹمس ویل اسٹوڈینٹس from the study of the magnetic fields which are produced by the bar magnets and the moving charges commonly known as currents it is possible to trace the origin of the magnetic properties of the material it is observed that field of a long bar magnet is like the field which is produced by a long solenoid carrying current and the field of the short bar magnet resembles that of a single loop Now the similarity between the fields which are produced by the magnets and the currents urges an inquiring mind to think that all magnetic effects may be due to the circulating currents. This view was first held by Ampere and the idea was not considered very favorably in Ampere's time because the structure of atom was not known at that time. Taking into the consideration the internal structure of the atom discovered thereafter, the Ampere's view appears to be basically correct. Magnetism which is produced by electrons within an atom can be because of uh, two type of the motions. First, each electron is orbiting its nucleus. It behaves like an atomic size loop of the uh, current that generates a small magnetic field. Now this situation is similar to the field which is created by a current loop. Secondly, each electron possesses a spin that also gives rise to a magnetic field. Now the net magnetic field which is created by the electrons within an atom is due to the combined field created by both orbital and spin motions. Since there are number of electrons in an atom, their currents or spin may be so oriented or aligned as to cancel the magnetic effects mutually or strengthen the effects of each other. Well, students, an atom in which there is a resultant magnetic field behaves like a tiny magnet and is known as magnetic dipole. The magnetic fields of the atom are responsible for the magnetic behavior of the substances made up of these atoms. Magnetism is therefore due to the spin and orbital motion of the electrons which are surrounding the nucleus and is thus property of all the substances. Now it may be mentioned that charged nucleus itself spins give rise to a magnetic field. However, it is much much weaker than that of the orbital electrons. Thus, the main source of magnetism of an atom is the motion of its electrons. Accepting this view of magnetism, it is concluded that it is impossible to obtain an isolated north pole. The north pole is merely one side of a current loop. The other side will always be present as a south pole and this cannot be separated. This is an, an experimental reality. Now the molecule of the magnetic substance whether magnetized or not is a complete magnet in itself having a north pole and a south pole of equal strength. In an unmagnetized substance the molecular magnets are randomly oriented as you can see in the figure. The north pole of one molecular magnet cancel the effect of south pole of the other so that the substances do not show any net magnetism. Now when a magnetizing force is applied to the substance, the molecular magnets are turned and turned to align in the same direction with north pole of one molecular magnet facing the south pole of the other as you can clearly see in the figure. The result is the magnetic field of the molecular magnets aid each other and two definite north and south pole are developed near the ends of the specimen. The strength of two poles being equal, hence the substance gets magnetized. Now how much magnetization is being possessed by the substance, it totally depends upon the extent of the alignment of the molecular magnets. 
if all the molecular magnets are fully aligned then this type of the substance is said to be saturated with magnetism now heat is a factor which can affect the strength of the magnetism of a substance when a magnetized substance uh, is heated what happens that on receiving this heat the molecular magnet they will gain their kinetic energy and because of their motion they may lose their alignment with each other and as a result of this a magnet loses some magnetism when they are being heated so here is the modern view of magnetism that magnetic properties of the substances are just because of the motion of the electrons now this motion which is both orbital and spin uh, on the basis of this each atom is uh, like a current loop that is it behaves as a magnetic dipole and in the unmagnetized substances these magnetic dipoles are randomly oriented so their magnetic fields mutually cancel the effect of each other and when the substance is magnetized it means that the magnetic dipoles have aligned themselves in the same direction so the substance shows that magnetism now the revolving and spinning of electrons in each atom cause magnetism no substance can be considered as non magnetic material it is important to note that spinning motion of electrons is particularly more responsible for magnetism of a substance as compared to the orbital motion of electron well student this is a brief introduction of the theory of the magnetism and a slight uh, information for you about the modern view of a magnetism inshallah in your coming lecture you will utilize this concept of magnetism to classify the solid state of the matter into different groups uh, till then take care stay blessed allah hafiz